Okay, is it nine? It is nine thirty. Okay, nine thirty-five. So we, we we will get started. Uh, okay, and the script is as a preliminary matter. This is a meeting of the Newbury uh, uh, Library Board of Trustees. Um, we're going to call the, uh, the roll of the members. Uh, when I call your name, please state the uh, I here, and the staff will do the same thing. So, uh, Dick Raven. Present. Uh, Terry Lickeris. Present. Alex Burke. Present. Dick Passeri, yes, I'm here, and Margaret, we know, is, uh, is missing. Uh, Gene Ackley. Present. Uh, Aaron Umet. Present. Okay. All right, now the script goes. Uh, this is an open meeting of the uh, Newbury uh, Library Board of Trustees is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Aye. March 12, uh, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of uh, COVID-19. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meetings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of open meeting order in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that public, the public can follow along durations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting uh, of the New Green Library Board of Trustees is convened <coughs> by uh, video conference via Zoom as posted on the agenda uh, in the town's, uh, on the town's website. So, uh, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded uh, and that the uh, Attendees are participating uh, by video conference. Uh, if uh, if anybody should should join and want to make a comment at some point after our discussions, they would be allowed to do so. All right. That having been said, um, agenda approval of the minutes, which we don't have because uh, Margaret isn't present at this time. Uh, we'll skip over that and go to the director's report, Jean. Okay. So um, why don't we let Aaron do statistics and, and also talk a little bit about the town report that just went out. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this month's um, batch of statistics had a couple of anomalies. Um, first, I'll say one of the things that was very, very popular on social media was the, our Indian cooking program. Um, People really did um, seem to interact with it and um, pass it along. So that um, is good to know. Um, but we're having an increase, a significant increase in our, in our Facebook usage. And, um, you know, at first it was only, you know, we, we tend to get a few follow new people every month and it, it's been going up very consistently. But when I went into it, and this is going to be really part of the next month's report, but um, halfway into March, we added 128 new followers to Facebook. Oh. Aaron, do you think that might have something to do with uh, sharing it on the kind of people of your page? Possibly. It let people know. I feel like we've you've shared on there before. I know I have. I shared... One of our funny things on there, I think, before maybe it wasn't cut, but yes, it could have. But 128 is yeah, a that's a lot in a two-week period. Um, so it's great. But however, um, our website uh, doubled its new users um, that month as well. I have our website company looking into that because that's just not possible <laughs> for us to have doubled how many people are coming to our site. Um, each month. Uh, so I have a feeling it's going to be some kind of bot that's coming to our site and, and doing something. So they're looking into that right now. <clears throat> and next month, I should have a better idea of, of why this happened. What's a um, bot? A bot, like a robot, a 
type of automated thing that something is pinging our site. Um, so we'll see, uh, hopefully we'll find out more um, in the next couple of weeks on that. Um, as for programming, our, our number of children's programs is, is significantly down and we're hoping to add much more um, for May when we hopefully can do some outdoor programming, um, weather dependent, um, because Zoom, Zoom programming is such a challenge. Um, and it is a challenge for, it's not as much of a challenge for adult programming, um, maybe because adults aren't in school all day using mm -hmm. Zoom, um, but it's still down. And, and we still have those same kind of struggles to get attendance for, for, for things that are a little bit different for our community. So our community seems to not have quite the same interest in um, the tech focused programs or the job focused programs, but they were, they were really interested in Ted Reinstein and Indian cooking. So it, you know, we're, we're still just throwing things up and we see what works, throw it on wall. And if it does continue, <laughs> um, and if it doesn't, you know, revise and see what we can do. Um, the annual report I um, forwarded to you as well. And in doing the annual report, it was interesting because I kind of I think Jean maybe was like, oh, God, what's it going to look like this year? <clears throat> but it's about half the year, a little more than half the year before COVID hit. And then you see the change after COVID hit. Um, and it's actually a pretty good annual report, I thought, all things considered. We, we did a lot. We did a lot before. We had a lot of success, um, the best harvest fest ever, um, for instance. And then afterwards, um, you know, it showed how we really got ourselves together and um, and all of the ways, I hate to use this word, and I want to find another word, pivoted <laughs> to continue serving our community and reaching out to our community um, and working with, you know, different parts, like working with COA, like when Jane helped them in reaching out to seniors. And there, there was just a lot of, of ways that we had successes um, over the year. So I, I thought it was a, a good... It was a good annual report and I thought it reflected well on, on the library. Especially considering we only had one week to do it. Yeah, <laughs> there was that. <laughs> we were notified that it was due in a week. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know if you have any questions, I can, um, I can try to answer them. Um, it, does, it does clearly show that we were going in a different direction before the pandemic hit and uh, you know, kind of the direction that we've been building towards, that you've been building towards over the past four or five years. Yeah. I'm starting to see the benefits of all of that effort. And uh, okay, it's a good foundation once this thing lifts again and uh, you know, uh, we're able to get back into the normal offering of services. And we'll and, and offer, you know, get back to normal offerings, but not forget all that we've learned because we have learned how to maybe offer to populations that weren't able to, we weren't able to reach prior to COVID. Yeah. All right. um, you know, that's, uh, we're finding things that we're, we're going to webinars and presentations from all over the place and things that I wouldn't drive to, but it's right. probably just the, you know, the, uh, Irish immigration, uh, we talked about the uh, Indian uh, uh, cooking. We did one on, uh, on Jewish cooking. Oh, I'm not a big fan of tongue, but that's, uh, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was fascinating. I mean, uh, we're doing, isn't there one tomorrow at the library doing something on cooking tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow is indoor seed starting. Indoor seed starting, okay. Wrong Which one. has been very popular. Yeah. So, no, those kinds of things, it's... Uh, I think that, yeah, we have learned from this and there are things that we can continue to offer in this. Uh, uh, good. Yeah. All right. I digress, as usual. Uh, 
But I, I'm curious, taking the Indian cooking thing as an example, do you have any sense that it spread out beyond our local community to places elsewhere in the country or the world that people found out about it and watched it? Not so much for that for that one, I don't think. Most of the people in there we knew, but although that um, she makes around with several other libraries and yeah, well. she did do a couple of other, which is what we're finding. Like the um, as I mentioned in the director's report, the the man that did the was doing the interview workshop the other night. He's been doing stuff all over the place, including BPL. Um, and I actually, for his second workshop, for the first time, I put it out to the the email list that basically is all libraries in the state. It's called all regions. Just because I figured there may be people that had taken one of his workshops at another library and really wanted to take the second one. And sure enough, registrations have, have you know, really picked up since I did that. It's a double-edged sword though. Um, you know, you, it's great to be open up to other libraries and have people from, you know, Carlisle attending one of our events, but we don't want to lose that sense of, of, you know, our patrons and making sure we cater to them and that sense that when people attend a program, even if it is virtual, they're attending with their own community members. So Erin and I kind of, we realize the need to do it, but we both, it also kind of makes us feel a little icky. <laughs> yeah. We, so we still want to figure out what works for the people in Newbury. Yeah, what, I mean, that's been our mission. Yeah. It does become a very, being one who utilizes other libraries for exactly this, um, um, it does become rather narrow in terms of what your, your focus. Um, mm -hmm. By way of example, we did one the other night through the Hingham, uh, the Hingham Library that was on the Four River Shipyard. Mm -hmm. And people from all over the country uh, uh, attending, and it was it was fascinating. So it depends on the topic and the subject. Yeah. Matter, I think the yeah. is a wide base. It is a a local topic. Obviously, it's something that uh, you know uh, it's more specific to the local community. But I think uh, broadening the base doesn't hurt over the long term. Right. Yes. Well, and there's two approaches to it. So where we don't have a, an enormous amount of funding for programs, if we use our funding for the things that are maybe more local, yeah. but share to the community um, events, virtual events that are happening at maybe some of the other bigger libraries yeah. um, so that you are still kind of getting um new and interesting ideas above and beyond the local, um, but maybe we're not having to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, especially getting... like the BPL, it does such, you know, <laughs> some really stellar programs. Yeah, yeah. And Dyke Hendrickson, who's, he reached out to me and we're, you know, he's gonna speak on the Merrimack River in his new book. But yeah, yesterday I saw he's basically at every library I... in the Northeast. Oh, <laughs> I saw that too, I'm like, oh God. <laughs> what was it, Teensboro that sent out the all regions? Yes, like, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got plenty registered for ours, so. Yeah. One of the articles that um, Dick had forwarded to us from the Library Commission um, talked about programs that were being done for older people who couldn't leave home on a regular basis for socialization. Um, That's right. I Some of them sounded really pretty good. Like they, they did trivia. They did it consistently every week. Um, and they did other things like name that tune. I don't, it takes manpower to be there to organize it, but it kept people in touch with each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've I've hesitated to go that route because I keep hearing from COA that they just have so many people that don't have computers and technology, and um, which is why I think the project that um, Theater Workshop is taking on with the the vignettes on people's lawns is going to be wonderful. And the phone tree, I think I mentioned that the yeah she's, try, she's trying to get uh, tweens. I guess tweens, but upper at elementary kids to do
do phone trees with seniors who don't have computers, don't get emails, mm-hmm. don't even have smartphones. My husband. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So that's it for me. Okay. All right, Jean. Okay, so first uh, we have the budget. Um, This budget is as of the end of February, so 228. Not a whole lot has changed. Uh, We're at 69% of the year. We spend 63% in salaries, 63% in library materials, and uh, 56% of our total budget that we are responsible for. Um, pretty much everything's straightforward. The not not a big, uh, a lot of big changes because I haven't started spending um, for materials out of the funds yet. So once that happens, you'll see some of those numbers jumping around. So I've got 18,392 left in the municipal fund for materials. And once that is is spent, which I think will be soon because Katie's got a whole bunch of enormous boxes out there, um, then I'll switch over to state aid, the other funds and gift and donation. Any questions? I don't have a question. I just wanted to say um, another thing that I did participate in, watch, um, was the space organization in the library presentation. And they had a PDF of their, that they've put together, um, which they now have in printable form. And I ordered two of them so that the, we'd have them at the library for right. us all to look at, okay? Thank Excellent. You. And I don't know um, if trustees are getting all the same emails as, as we are, but I, it looks like some of the CARES Act stuff is, um, you know, not just the, the stuff that I'm using like for virtual programming, but that there's money that's gonna be there for uh, build, rebuilding, uh, renovations, all of that stuff. I've only just skimmed it. Dick, I see you nodding. So are you getting those? Yeah, I, I have seen. I haven't read it in great detail. Just, again, it's still early in the process. They right. haven't formulated how they're actually going to distribute this money. But I think uh, state had indicated, uh, from the state had indicated that they would keep us informed as this stuff developed. And it is something to keep an eye on. There's a number of things that we've talked about talked about doing the uh, all these, uh, sustainability things. Uh, we've talked about uh, putting the cameras in place. Uh, um, you know, we can go off the deep end, or at least I can, in terms of the need for additional space for, for storage and uh, so forth. So, yeah, I think we'll keep an eye on that and talk about it as they formulate uh, how they're going to distribute these. It's still early in the game, so. Yeah. yeah, and I think they're really hoping to get most of it to underserved areas. So no, that was gonna is, be as it should be. Yeah, that was gonna, that was seen to be the priority. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll move on to the director's report. Okay. For facilities, Catherine Delea will be in touch in April about painting the community room and getting the hanging system up. She will have received her second shot by then, as as will some of us. So we'll be good to go. The uh, blood drive is March 27th, which is a week from tomorrow. Again, we're not really managing any of that. My understanding is that they are just probably use the community room to to sign in, and then all the the blood drawing and everything else will be in mobile buses. I think they're having two mobile buses in the parking lot. So um, we're, I've got a sign up that they sent me, but we're not really advertising it. That's, that's really um, on them. And uh, the uh, Board of Health has been involved all the way through. My question. Yeah, yeah. 
and the Board of Health will be involved when Catherine comes in. We're not going to do anything in there without their approval. Yep. Sounds good. Which includes theater walk workshop. Yep. So for programming for adults, virtual program continues to be frustrating in terms of attendance. I did have to cancel two programs. And it's interesting, Erin, because on the statistics, the job searching yep. got a whole bunch of likes and that's partly because it was shared on other uh, pages but I also did a, a little Facebook ad <laughs> um, so that could attribute to some of that too but nobody came <laughs> so I had to cancel it so everybody shared it all over the place but nobody came um, that was interesting yeah for last night's program, which I said, four people registered and none showed up, which is very frustrating. So now I'm getting more registrants and the, the gentleman doing it was, was very patient and was lovely. Um, but I'm getting all these registrations for the second session. So I'm going to email people that morning and say, you know, please, if, if you don't think you're going to be able to attend, please cancel your registration so that we're not sitting there star staring at the screen, waiting for so somebody to show up. It's a rather <laughs> awkward feeling. <laughs> um, we have plenty of registrations for indoor seed starting. I think we're up about 20. And as I said, Dyke Hendrickson's program on the Merrimack. Um, and uh, as I said, people looking for employment is, is a limited number of people. So it stands to reason we're not gonna get the same kind of engagement. Aaron and Katie are collaborating on a really cool historical outdoor escape room that should be an ama amazing and a great way to get folks to the library this summer. We're shooting for June, is it, Erin? Yes, do you mind if I jump in on this one really quick? Because no. I wanted to ask you, um, we're looking for a map that could be blown up like to the point of 10 feet wide and printed like a um, outdoor, um, you know, what's the, with grommets, like a thing we could hang on the side of the building. Um, that is a map of Newbury from the 16 or 1700s. So throwing it out there, we may try to draw our own, <laughs> but, you know, based off of the smaller ones we found, um, but everything was so low resolution, we didn't think we would be able to blow anything up like that. So. I thought I'd throw that in your brain. The town clerk, Leslie, has a photoable one of old Newbury. That's like 18 inches by 20, maybe. Oh. Um, it goes that far back? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Okay. Um, I know I have one here, but I don't want to go look for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have one. <laughs> We uh, have time, but it would be used for it's a it's a escape room scavenger hunt local history thing that we're kind of doing, um, which is coming along really really well. And KDD is it's a very complex project in order to link these local history factoids with puzzles that connect you to the next puzzle and everything is timed. So it takes about five minutes to solve each puzzle. And, you know, you wind up saving this witch that lived in Newbury from the, la from the 1600s or accused, accused of being a witch. Um, so it's, it's a very fun thing, but it's very complex, but we, we needed the map to hang on the side of the building to do one, one or more of the puzzles. <laughs> Have you looked at the pamphlet <clears throat> which the Historical Commission has published? A pamphlet? We yeah. looked online and found many maps. They were just all too low resolution. We had those pamphlets ready to go. Um, and now that we've cleaned out that lobby, we have to figure out, I don't know how many we had left before COVID. Are these the books? The little booklets? Pamphlets. Pamphlets. Yeah. Historical sites of old Newbury. Right. I'll have to look for those. Doesn't focus on the 16th, 17th, 18th, whatever you're looking for. You have looked through Courier. I looked through, I don't think it was Courier. Where? 
Let me go see where it was that I looked. Um, here we go. Oh, it doesn't say where they're from. Um, Did you find a map you liked except for the resolution? He, we did. We found a couple. Just trying to remember if I can find the link. Oh, the Digital Commonwealth. That's where we went. Yeah. yeah. Um, we found a couple and we can try because back then there wasn't, the, the map can be rather simple because there wasn't so much in Newbury at the time. We're really looking for like the bridge area and um, things like that. So we did Pretty find- bridge. The bridge going to, we needed one bridge. And I guess in the 1680s, there only was one bridge. So I think it was the one going from, uh, was it the one just past the Governor's Academy on Route Thorles, 1 there? Or Thorley's, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, because we were going to work that in. Um, it's not, it's, no, it's not a requirement at all. It would just be great if, if I figured I'd throw it out there and pick your brain a little to see if you had any, anything came to mind. I was just wondering whether you could contact the people that posted the, the map to see whether they had a higher res version of it. Yeah, or, and we or, might. Or, or could make a higher res version of it. Right, right. Versus if we figured out a way to take the map and somehow project it on a wall, you know what I mean? And trace it or something. Because um, it is a really rudimentary, simple map from back then. It's not at all like um, like it would be today. I've got on my one of my files a map of, um, I think it's Newbury, Newburyport, 1795. Um, I can't remember the level of detail in it. I will I could check that now to break away from this and come back. Oh, that's um, okay. No rush. No rush. After is totally fine. I'll find it and ship it to you. Great. Great. Thank you. So anyway, um, Couriers, two volumes, Old Newbury. There are maps there. Uh, Couriers, uh, History of Newbury. Again, uh, Dick's point about the resolution. Um, don't know how either one of them would fit. Um, Coffin also has maps, but although we've we've got some really good repros of uh, Courier's uh, History of Newbury done, time of the three hundred. 350th, 1985. Okay. And I'll, um, I'll make an inquiry over to the uh, museum that would be once awesome. we get through those steps to see if there's anything there. Okay. And this fabulous map of um, Newburyport in uh, the mid 19th, but that's not gonna be a lot of help to you. It's gonna be any help to you. Right. Because um, you're apparently looking toward Elizabeth Mar Morris and such things, but yes, yes, <laughs> yes. she's the star of the show. Yeah. And uh, do 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 be careful as to um, where you have her residing. Uh, Courier is um, quite precise in uh, uh, correcting, if you oh. will, yeah, prior prior locations for the woman. She was, she lived down on the corner of what is now Middle and uh, Market Square. There's a plaque right outside the jewelry uh, oh, store. Wow. Yeah. Well, you can see that. Just walk down State yeah. Street. <laughs> One of your evening excursions. <laughs> yeah, well, those are about to come to a close. <laughs> you know, you might want to talk to Sarah Ryan. <laughs> Sally. Over at your report? No, Sally, no. our volunteer, you oh, know, yeah. who worked. Oh, oh, yeah. One of her ancestors was accused of being a witch. Yeah. And she's been looking into mm -hmm. all of that. Definitely talk to her. 
Absolutely. You brought it up to the right crowd, Erin. I did. <laughs> Sorry, I hijacked the meeting, but so, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why we're here. Right. More fun okay. than talking, it's more fun than talking about the MAR. <laughs> <laughs> right on, That's Dick. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what hey. you're talking about. <laughs> what is that again? <laughs> Dick, have you got your signatures yet? Yeah. Good. Yay. Thank you so much, yes. by the way. You know, you were so helpful, all of you. But uh, Harry especially. Yeah. I ended up I ended up going to the dump. <laughs> well, I was dumping my stuff off. It was a lovely day. It was warm. I, could, I figured out I could put it on my car hood and stay, you know, keep a distance. That would get done, man. You know. <laughs> all set for that. But, Good. Okay, shall I pick up where I left off? Um, <laughs> no, no apology necessary. Well, um, so with town approval, theater workshop will be using the library grounds for rehearsals beginning around April 12th. You know, April is always a question mark in terms of weather, but that's what they're hoping for. The, they'll be there um, Mondays and Thursdays from four to six, I think. Uh, so I, I did reach out to the baseball league. I have not heard back. Um, I'm not even certain they have a spring schedule. So we'll see what happens there. They did last year, surprisingly. They did? Yeah. But they had a schedule or were they just sort of it seems over like there? They, they were okay. still playing. Yeah. Because I remember seeing them and being like, wow, that's happening. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so programs uh, youth. Yes, Katie's new around the world is to Japan. I hope everybody got a chance to watch. I thoroughly enjoyed it, although I'm terrible at origami. <laughs> I don't even try anymore. Um, and take and make crafts continue to be popular and people are registering now to do, to do them together on Zoom. So as Erin said, okay. both Katie and I are gonna revamp our our uh, programming in May in hopes that we can do as much of it as possible outdoors and uh, really get things rolling again because we're the first to admit we've been in a bit of a COVID slump. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna start anew with spring. <laughs> uh, let's see, oh yes, staff, Jane, as was to be expected, received all kinds of gifts and flowers from patrons. They're still telling us at the doors how much they miss her. Uh, but we did have a fun send off with her on the 65 degree day. It was my first time at a restaurant in over a year. I wasn't in the restaurant, I was outside, so that was nice. Uh, we sat outside at sea level and Caitlin White came and we had a lot of laughs. We are wrapping up in-person interviews this week. We have two this afternoon, one at 12 and one at noon, distanced and masked. Uh, one of our candidates did have to drop out for uh, health reasons, so we're now down to four, I guess. Yes, four. And we should have a new hire selected by next week. I was hopeful we'd have somebody for this meeting, but that wasn't meant to be. And we really do have some great candidates. As soon as this position is filled, we will need to start advertising and interviewing for Marsha's position. I do hope to get to South Carolina in early May, and uh, I'd like to get that position hired before I leave, although whether I go in May is completely up in the air. But Marsha does work until the end of May. And I think I mentioned in the last meeting that she will be back to volunteer with her son, Ben, so we're thrilled. <laughs> because she can help out with some cataloging and Ben can help out with some shelving and it's a win-win all around. Friends and volunteers, still no volunteers in the library, though we, we weep every week that we don't, don't have them. Tammy Cotter is, is like at the door <laughs> knocking, <laughs> so eager to get in here. Help us organize this place. The friends met on March 3rd. I was out, Erin attended. They are getting organized for the plant sale in May, which hopefully will be at the library. And that will be the last Saturday we are open before summer. And Erin is working with the friends to revamp their website. And I think that's it. 
unless there are questions. I just clarify, it's more take getting rid of the friends individual website and bringing them under ours um, so that it's more unified and um, presentable. Hi, Margaret. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is, uh, well, the, the hiring process. Um, is there anything more to say on that, Jean? Uh, for the, uh, uh, probably not. Um, I will say that the candidate that dropped out, we, uh, we really liked but we had concerns about whether she, it was enough job for her. Mm -hmm. And she was the only candidate that did ask about the salary if it was negotiable. So in a way it's kind of a relief because I probably would have had to go to the town and ask for more money for that position, which would be particularly troublesome right now. So everybody else, nobody else has, has asked that question, mm -hmm. although I suppose they still could. Um, yeah, so that's all about that. Then, and, and that's, I think the, uh, library associate Marsha's position will be at the same salary level, seeing as, as far as I know, we are level funded for next year. So you would plan to advertise for, uh, for Marsha's position, uh, in April? Yes which is right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, and you would envision getting uh, that, that process, the interview process started before Marsha actually leaves? Uh, probably not the interview process, but just the, the posting and the... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I thought your question was different. Yes, we right. want to, to get that position hired before Marsha leaves. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think I've touched on any, any of the others. I did, we could speak just a little bit about reopening. Um, we don't, the town has not given us a date and uh, it, uh, it, from what Dick Passeri has gleaned, it's not looking all that likely that it will be April 1st, which is okay, especially considering we don't have anybody in uh, our circulation position yet. Um, but the one thing I did want to mention next week, we're going to meet with the staff that we have, <coughs> excuse me, and put our brains once again on reopening. But the one thing that Aaron and I feel pretty strongly about, and I don't think we're going to get any pushback from staff, is that we probably, and again, unless the town tells us we should, we're not planning to open with uh, appointments. We're planning to just open the doors. We may have to keep doing curbside for people that don't want to come in the building. But after gauging what other libraries have done, ones that have been open the whole time, ones that have been closed the whole time, ones that opened briefly and um, have altered their process along the way, there are very few that are still using appointments now. We um, would use them for the computers. Except for the computers. Um, but we, it's, it's very unlikely we're going to reach our maximum limits. Right. Nobody, everybody says we've ne we never reached our maximum yeah. limit. And it's just so much more work for staff to do the appointments, to schedule them, to check people in at the door. It's, mm -hmm. So this, you know, unless um, any of you feel differently, this is what we would really like to do. Um, and I think, it, I think it'll be easier on the staff, to be honest. That my, our biggest concern is children's. We may have to, you know, if we don't want suddenly have five families in there. So we'll have to um, have a way to sort of, if, if we look out our door and realize, oh my goodness, there's four families in there to, to kind of uh, close off children's. Um, but this is something, like I said, that other libraries are doing. And I, again, I don't know, you know, the town is doing appointments only, so I don't know if they will require us to do that, but I hope to have a conversation with Chief Lucy about it. I mean, they're doing appointments now. Right. Uh, but I think if they go to opening up, 
to the public, I, I, I think the, the appointment process would probably go away. That would be my yeah. guess anyway. Yeah. And obviously you have to coordinate with uh, uh, whatever the committee is called, the Emergency Response Committee uh, and the Board of Health. So I think we have to coordinate everything uh, with them. And uh, I, the message I'm hearing is that all, to, all town facilities will open at the same time. Yes, it won't be sporadic. It'll be everything across the board will open. Whenever that is, and I have no indication when that will be. So, um, they're just kind of watching and you know, following uh, whatever the directives are coming from the state at this point, and uh, right. as cautious as possible. Right. We, we just want to have a plan ready because as we've learned in the past, uh, and, and, it takes and, sometimes and, these things are sudden. <laughs> and, I, and I think we should, we should be uh, giving thought to that. I think we've had, uh, you know, a year of this mixed bag and uh, you have a sense of what works and what doesn't and, uh, you know, start formulating a uh, plan and outline anyway and you know, right. you know, flesh it out as, as we go forward. But, uh, you know, um, I think, and again, open up to, to the public without appointments, I think makes sense. Uh, more and more places are doing it, I know. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, people have, still have to take uh, reasonable precautions and hopefully they will. So. And without children's program, without any programs happening in the building, those are the kinds of events that would bring in large groups of people at once. So without having those and without having seating areas and things like that, um, it, it's unlikely, it's really unlikely that we're going to draw huge crowds. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't think you would. I think people would say yeah. you know, to a certain degree they're gun shy to a certain degree. Right. So. If we, I mean, if we were having outdoor programming, yeah, um, would, we might... Would, yeah want to limit you know we might have to kind of wing it a little bit on those days and times but you know yeah uh, that, it sounds like uh you know putting start putting the, the pieces in place and uh you know whatever we can do obviously uh, we're available to, to assist so thank you want to yeah. come help us weed the collection yeah we had a big shift oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I didn't think we could allow volunteers in the building <laughs> Yeah. We can't. We can't. Um, today's New York Times, which I read online, so I don't know if it's in the paper paper, had an uh, interesting Q&A with two doctors and people asking questions, you know, I've been vaccinated, can I hug my grandkids? And yeah. It goes through a number of uh, kinds of questions about things like this, like what what's safe to do and what should we wait on? So you might want to take a look at it because they had some particular oh. view change up in in terms of you, in terms of traveling, when to travel, when to feel comfortable to start traveling and stuff. Right. Let me know when that is, please. Yeah. Not as soon as you would like. Yeah, uh, I know. <clears throat> because, I mean, the issue is that that those of us who are lucky enough to be vaccinated now may still, they don't know yet whether we can still get infected and get, you know, not have any effects from the disease and give it to somebody right. else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Um, that's that's the consideration, and I also feel. I mean, I don't know how realistic this is because I know that the particular vaccine that I got um, is, you know, has a. I got the Johnson and Johnson, so there's a, a, a higher rate of of in, infection possibility, though not in terms of dire effects. So I just don't know in terms of my own personal health how how careful I'm going to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's my wife's phone. <laughs> Just hang up on her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. My daughter calling her mom. I don't hang up on those calls. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Is there anything else? Not on my end. Next month, I hope we can actually do regular trustee business like approving policies and things like that, but I think that every month and then something always seems to get in the way. Eventually, you'll be right. <laughs> I suppose That's so. 
We can, um, I can read the minutes from February. We can oh, vote on oh, this. Right, yes. <laughs> yeah. How about that? There's some business for us to do that doesn't need to have to do with COVID. That'll be the first and only thing that we vote on today. Oh, good. So, <laughs> so Dick Raven, I'm sure your notes are pretty sparse, which are, which is a good thing. Yeah. All right. Um, the meeting was called to order via Zoom at 9.30 a.m. We were all there. Um, I'll read it off. Dick, Margaret, Terry, Alex, Dick, Jean, and Aaron. The board voted unanimously to approve the minutes from the January 15th meeting. Jean presented her director's report and Aaron presented the monthly statistics report. Jean presented the budget update. The next meeting will be Friday, March 19th at 9.30 a.m. via Zoom. The meeting adjourned at 10.53 a.m. There's a list of documents. All right. Uh, motion to so Dick. Okay, Dick has made it. Terry seconded it. Uh, motion made and seconded. All in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. Uh, uh, unanimous. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> Perfect timing. Good thing you showed up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> now, do we want to pick a date for the next meeting? Might as well. Hmm. Margaret, I think it's frozen. Oh. She does look frozen. <laughs> that hasn't happened in a while. I had a lot of problems with my computer yesterday. I don't know why. I did too. I found, I found <clears throat> the internet connection to be very slow yesterday. Yeah. Are you a Comcast, Comcast, a Comcast person? My mouse was like jumping on the screen. And, stuff. and then it huh. did so. Uh, how does... Uh... April 16th or uh, April 23rd? I am out on the 23rd, so the okay. 16th would be better. Possible. All right. So how's the 16th for everybody? Good. Yeah. Okay for me. So let's say April 16th at 930. That's working. Yep. Lost my group. Nope. Yeah, we'll we'll have to send her the new date. Yeah. Okay. If there's nothing else. At ten twenty two we can have a motion to adjourn. Okay. Anybody? Me. Sorry, you made the motion. It's gonna second it. Dick seconded, Dick Raven seconded, all in favor? Okay. We have made a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank and you. Away we go. And away we go. <laughs> and that's 21. I'll send it. I'll send this to Margaret. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Okay. Take care, Al. And right. everybody get your second shots if you haven't. So. Uh, Will do. Yep. All right. Take, Take care. care. Yep. Take care. Much, everybody. I know. <laughs>